Hello again. Um, where have we got to since the last time? Well, we've done a few things, so just try and keep the camera steady this time. Absolute nightmare. Um, right, first of all, the big problem that we had earlier, um, which was uh, the the fact that we only had here a bar that went to the to the post, which I put temporarily on the centre strut. Um, the reason for that was, um, as I said in my last video, um, I stupidly ordered the wrong length. So we've got a 500 millimeter piece now, which is more than adequate. A little bit of an overlap each end. This is secured to two upright gantries here, which is secured to the frame. And so this head can now move from uh, right over that side to almost over this side, which means that this cutter uh, has the full span of the uh, the cutting table. I, ju I just put a, a little um, block on here, which you can see. And what I'm going to do is just give you a rough idea of what's going on here. Is uh, line that up with a line, which we got on here. Now, obviously, if this was actually cutting, um, this would be accurately lined up. I I would use um, a um, a fence here and clamps for the piece of uh, material. The material I'm using, I'm just showing you now, is, is large because um, it is easy to see for the video, but it would not be able to be that large. It would only obviously be as large as the, as the depth of the actual, of the actual blade um, allows it. So that's the idea, clamped on there. The stepper motor, um, which was there before, um, will drive this screw and this screw would be attached to the base of this so as that turns this moves along and as you can see that will move the um, the material under the blade until it hits the limit switch then it will move it back and so on and so forth at the moment there is nothing to change the height of the cutter in relation to the um, uh, to, to, to the uh, metal so um, uh, that's what the next stage we'll be working on but what else have we added well we've changed the stepper board to one that can be programmed uh, that came uh, in less than uh, 24 hours which is quite amazing and has a um, this particular model obviously if you're going to have to program it remotely from the computer you're going to need a, um, a screen which comes with it which is that screen there and you're going to need uh, it actually runs a little bit hotter so it's a fan and you're going to need um, a, a keypad which is, is this um, this one it, I mean it's cheap and cheerful but it does the job at the moment what I've done is uh, I think I mentioned before is that you can actually program the um, G code which is a code that uh, is used uh, by Mac 3 software which, or another CNC software that uh, um, allows commands to be sent to the stepper motors and various other things like the spindle speed and a coolant and uh, things like that um, from a program but on, on, on this particular device I've just temporarily programmed this axis as the x-axis because that's where it's plugged into down there and I've told it to um, to do some code um, and as you can see I've just started it and it's running so the x-axis is, is um, incrementing as it's running it's just telling it to go higher and higher to the to the point I want now if this was turning a screw this would effectively let me just put this down a second this would effectively turn the screw which would move the table progressively and quite slowly in this direction like that bloody sight more um, smoothly than I can um, when it hits the end there will be a limit switch so that's reached the limit so at this point this stepper motor would um, stop and then it would reverse direction um, and um, start going back the other way pulling the 
pulling the table back, cutting another groove in here. And that will keep going on backwards and forwards, being run by the program that I've put in like this, but a lot slower. Um, progressively cutting the metal uh, until it's cut through. So that's the idea. At the moment, you can see it's running. Um, and you can see the x axis going up five, six, seven, and so on. And these are um, points from millimeters, so you know it's quite a it's quite an accurate machine. I can make it go faster, I can make it go slower, um, and I can make it other axes drive. The other axes, one particularly is is the z axis which this will be fitted to eventually um, would actually be moving down so if you can imagine this being fixed in a horizontal position and moving down every time it reaches one end the computer or the the program on here tells the um, tells the z-axis to um, to actually drop um, the head by one division and that division can be as much as or as little as you want it to be so once it's finished one pass it drops it a little bit comes back saws it again uh, and then repeats till it reaches the end switches over goes back drops comes back and so on and so forth so that's the idea so effectively while I'm in there making a cup of coffee um, this this whole thing is is doing its uh, job what does it cost so far uh, the whole of the computer thingy jiggy stepper thing here, including the programming, is about 80 quid, or $100, something like that, $110. Um, the, um, the actual um, drill, they run, it, uh, they run it about 180 quid uh, pounds, which is quite expensive. Um, but this particular one I got for less than half that price, so that, that's quite, that was quite cheap it does give me a lot more flexibility than just having a little spindle motor because it allows for me to do some soaring um, so hopefully that will be what, what I what I use it might be too heavy uh, in it, and in the end I might actually end up putting a, a smaller motor on but uh, at the moment that's the plan the original plan was to take it off this bar lift it up put it on here um, and have that be able to swing over so it could be a mill and a drill. So a precision drill would allow you to move backwards and forwards along a row of if you want to draw, drill holes in, in, in a sequence which is often the case um, or if you want to mill a slot you put the milling cutter in and have the table move and that would mill a slot. Um, it's, it's not C well I suppose it is partially CNC but it's not com fully fitted out. The idea is to um, to make it do both, uh, how I implement that at the moment is uh, is a bit up in the air. But um, I, at the moment, I'm really pleased with this. It's um, let's just turn this uh, motor off before it drives me around the bend. Um, it is controllable from here, so that's good. It is working, which is also a miracle. Uh, and uh, I'm still waiting for parts to actually attach the screw so I can get it working and show you. But so far we're coming along so that's uh second video in a series of uh of my heath robinson um machine to start cutting metal um obviously a lot of this is out in the open at the moment it's not going to be because there's going to be lots of liquids and things like that flowing about and bits of metal flying in all directions so we're not gonna we're obviously gonna have to protect that but we have plans for that so that's the second video see you again next time hopefully with a, an update on how it all works cheers